Hello everyone. So the following chapter we're going to cover is entitled Why Philosophy and it is the first of, um, of chapters of Louis Vaughn's book Why Philosophy. Um, we're going to look at three particular sections and try to get a deeper understanding of, um, uh, of this notion, of this understanding of why why sh we should indeed philosophize, right, or, or, or um, consider a, a studying of philosophy. Um, so one of the first key points that Vaughn points out or, or is uh, acknowledging is this idea that philosophy is, first and foremost, it's one of the humanities. So it's not just this arbitrary, random, subject that came out of nowhere it's actually much like in the field of you know science um, and and it is from here and actually it should be noted you, you if you can see the image here you see an interconnectedness between one several of the sciences and uh, the humanities themselves but it should be noted and and, and I'm wondering why there's not a more um, like why philosophy is not categorized like in a in a grander uh, area, because it, because um, because philosophy is one of those fields in which other subjects evolved, including the fields of like physics, biology, and even uh, you know uh, non science non scientifics non scientific issues like philosophy or biology, but things like political science, law, issues of the sorts. Uh, so this is interesting, right? It, you know, philosophy, again, it's not this random subject that's coming out of nowhere. It's, it's indeed a core subject from which other additional subjects uh, root in. Uh, so that's the first reason. Uh, the second one regards something in the area of, um, uh, I guess, rationality or critical reasoning. And, and, and so if, if we're conceiving of why philosophy is this idea of why it's a good, right, considered the good philosophy, it, it's very much, it's very much and strongly that it's not just about ideas, but rather, as noted in the book, fundamental ideas. So, I mean, these are like essential, necessary undoubted ideas um, and so and so again we've got this concept called the philosophical method um, through which how are you know what what is it that we're doing with philosophy well, we're trying to find deeper answers in the areas of reality in the areas of morality and the areas of knowledge in a fundamental way. So I'm trying to understand reality fundamentally. I'm trying to understand morality fundamentally. And I'm trying to understand this conception of knowledge fundamentally. That is, I'm trying to understand it in a way in which um, I'm, I'm saying this is absolutely critical and essential to my, my enrichment uh, as a human being. Um, Philosophy has very important branches, and and uh, if you notice the the, uh, the the philosophical method of identifying fundamental ideas under the branches of reality, um, the branches of, of morality, and the branch of uh, of uh, knowledge, uh, it falls into these general ideas. So. Metaphysics, metaphysics uh, uh, can be understood as the nature of reality. What, what precisely is reality? Uh, now this is, you know, it, it sounds slightly complex, and it is to a certain extent, but if we, if we say, what is a human being? Well, in, in one sense, the reality of what a human being is can be thought of biologically. You know, we're, we're a series of organs, muscles, tissues, arteries, 
blood vessels, etc., organs. But what about the mind? How would can we can we create an objective or empirical description of the mind? What is the mind? Can it be described the way a muscle can, right? Or 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 like the torso or the brain or things of the sort. So what's the nature of that reality? Or 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 is there no nature to that reality? Are we just but entities that function in a sense you know we we in a sense function chemically right? reactionary um, there's also the branch of epistemology epistemology deals with the nature of knowledge how how is it that we know what we know um, and and one conception is uh, as rooted for example I'll mention uh, Socrates and Plato we actually say, well, look, you, you don't really need to learn anything in, in a kind of spiritual sense, non-Christian spiritual sense. We have an inner spirit that already knows everything there is to know, and, and all we need to do is familiarize ourselves with, with the surroundings of the world. So it's kind of like a, like a nature concept that we were born already with this knowledge about the world. And then there's the nurture concept, or, or are we, you know, one of the philosophers will still study later on, John Locke, who said we're blank slates, we're like these empty cups, who, who we really don't know anything, and we only come to know things through experience. Epistemology, we come to know things through experience. Right? Um, so that's, that's kind of like the tug and pull about, you know, the question regarding this ideal, this fundamental idea about knowledge. And then there's axiology, which is divided between an understanding of, of aesthetics, art, beauty, or ethics. We're not really going to focus on aesthetics, um, at least not within the contents of this book. I might mention some things later on, but we're all, we are going to focus on ethics, or what's this notion of morality? What What is it that defines a right? What is it that defines a wrong? What is right? What is wrong? What are, what are some fundamental conceptions of, of rights and wrong? And, and so in thinking about um, ethics, you know, we are asking these questions about, you know, is there a universal of right? Is there a universal of wrong? Uh, and so that's what's dealing with the fundamentals about what, what um, you know, uh, this tug and pull on morality. Um, the last one, logic. Logic deals with critical reasoning about, first and foremost, asking these fundamental questions. And we are asking these fundamental questions in a way in, in, in which we're trying to get to, attempt to get to a truth about reality, knowledge, and morality. Uh, the next section, this, this chapter interestingly uh, references Socrates. And, and I think when, when we're conceiving of, you know, what is it that we're doing when we're conceiving these fundamental ideas? Well, we're asking questions about reality, morality, knowledge. Uh, and Socrates is one of the great, you know, um, one of the great philosophers who, who sought out to inquire about uh, what's the answer to these things. Now, he was, he was according to the writings of uh, Plato, he was uh, incessantly, right, you, you know, without, with, with due persistence, uh, always asking about the truth of things, never asserting an answer really, but always questioning. And he has a real famous quote, the unexamined life is not worth living. Um, and why, why, is it that, why is it that the unexamined life is written? You know, it, it kind of seems common sense, but... It, he brought up this idea of the soul. Now, this is not the soul in the in the Christian sense, right? Um, this is a soul, and it is a soul in the spiritual sense, in which in which he says the soul is enriched by knowledge, and so we're not out there to acquire answers. Then you're in essence not enriching the self. Um, Tied to Socrates, of course, is the famous Socratic method in which 
you know, you ask a question, you get an answer, and you ask a question, and you get an answer. It's like this constant question and answer dialogue with the attempts to try to uncover the truth. Uh, the next section dealing with critical reasoning is uh, the, this notion of thinking philosophically. And um, there is a process, as you can see here, in which we're, 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 we're aiming towards creating a series of arguments. Um, this is extensive, so you'd certainly need to refer to the book to get a, a deeper understanding of this. But uh, to break it down simply, the, the, uh, the, the characteristics, uh, the qualities of an argument are you've got to have a set conclusion. And that conclusion is, is supported and defended by a series of premises uh, in, which, in which you say, you know, here's this premise and this premise, and these premises must be true so that the conclusion can be asserted as true. Or if the conclusion is truth, then that means the premises are justifyingly true. Right? Uh, there is an argument that might be uh, um, uh, thought of in the sense of inductive reasoning. Uh, for the most part, the, this process of premise, premise, conclusion, we're aiming for a deductive argument, but an inductive argument is one where um, the, 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 the conclusion might be true, but the premises the premises is, might be probable. In other words, they, they may certainly not necessarily assert um, a truthfulness towards the conclusion. Okay. Um, there are certain structures that are, that are um, good structures. Uh, if you look at the example here, you have on one side, on the left-hand side, you have what's called modus ponens. If P, then Q, P, therefore Q. Versus modus, or not versus, but also modus tollens on the right-hand side. If P, then Q, not Q, therefore not P. These are good, strong structures. If you, if you, if you make an argument in this structural format, then, then, uh, then you're on your way to constructing a solid argument. If you construct invalid arguments, as you see down at the bottom, affirming the consequence or denying the antecedent, then you're going to have what are called fallacies. And, and I, there's a series of examples here, straw man, appeal to the person, appeal to popularity. There's many ways to make an argument, but not always in which we make arguments, equivocation, appeal to ignorance, false dilemma, begging the question. Um, so, so you have a series of many possible... Uh, fallacies in which some type of arguments are are simply wrong or or you know as Socrates would do he'd listen carefully to the argument and he'd go through a process of questioning and and he what he what is he gonna do whatever statement or assertions you are creating then it's my job as a philosopher to question it and through and so as we you go through a series of these examples, then you're 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 addressing, you're trying to see maybe um, holes in the argument, right? Um, so in essence, that's a wrap. So so you know we discussed for the most part the how philosophy is a quest for understanding. We had an overview of Socrates and the examined life, and and we went through this process of uh, thinking philosophically. Um, so certainly review additionally through the text, and I hope it's uh, hope you get something out of it. Thank you.